Hey, good afternoon. It's Anna with the In Flight Life. And as you can see, I'm home today. No flying for me today. I have a couple days off until I start working my tail off. So I'm home on this rainy, rainy day. My kids are coming home early, or at least one kid's coming home early. They have early release. Um, I have crap chicken in the crock pot, which is basically the easiest meal in the world and the best reheated chicken ever. And I'll tell you real quick, not what I was going to talk about today, but let me just tell you, you just need like four or five chicken breasts, a couple bricks of uh, cream cheese, and then a couple tablespoons of ranch dressing or a packet of ranch dressing. I have the jar, so I pour it in. Um, and then you slow cook it all day. My house smells wonderful. I'm really hungry. So excuse me if my stomach growls while I'm talking to you. All right. So I'm going to talk today about buddy passes. I did another video where I was talking about travel benefits, and but it got really confusing. So I'm just going to talk about buddy passes today. I'll do another video about the travel benefits you get as an employee. But the reason why I'm going to talk about buddy passes is because that is the thing that most airline employees get requested by friends and family. They get messages on their text saying, hey, I haven't seen you since high school. I heard you work for enter the airline name and then they proceed to ask for a buddy pass happened to me years and years and years ago but let me just tell you i do not give away my buddy passes and i will tell you why so a buddy pass is a benefit where if you have a friend or a family member like an aunt or an uncle that you want to give a discounted uh flight to somewhere. So if let's say Chicago to Denver. So you want to give them a buddy pass. Now, the buddy pass is not free. <sighs> Shocking, not free. It is not free. It, it costs either the employee money, like meaning it comes out of their paycheck. And that again, I'm talking about all airlines. I've worked for two legacy car carriers. So this is experience from older experience and current experience. So it's, if it doesn't sound correct from what you think I'm talking about, it's different for every airline. So I'm just trying to give you a basic overview. So it either comes, the money comes out from the person's paycheck or the, the buddy pass has the opportunity to pay the fee themselves by giving the credit card to the employee so they can actually put the card through. All right. So we know it's not for free now. Reasons why I don't like giving a buddy pass. You are on standby. Now, if you know what standby is, if you've traveled at all, or if you're not a traveler, I'll explain it. But standby is you are waiting on a flight that you are not confirmed on to get a seat. Do you hear? Let me say it again. You are waiting on a flight that you don't have a seat on. You got to wait. There are several types of standby passengers. The one standby you will see very often are like the paid revenue standby, which means let's say, so for example, my husband works out of town. He has a ticket, uh, He right today, I'll even say today, he has a ticket on um, Southwest. I think it's a one o'clock flight. It's already one o'clock, so hopefully he's already on the way, but let's say it was a six o'clock flight. Well, let's say his meetings got out early and he got to the airport and lo and behold, there is a flight at one o'clock. And so instead of stay, waiting five hours, he asks, hey, can I stand by for this flight? I'm not gonna get into all the costs and stuff. Again, all airlines are different. They put him on standby, which means he doesn't have a seat, but he's trying to get on. He just doesn't care. He just wants to get on and go home. Now, he's a revenue passenger, which means if there is a seat available, most likely he will get it. When you stand by as a buddy pass rider, you are standing by after all those people that come up and say, hey, can I get on this earlier flight? Get on. So you basically get on after all the people that paid for a ticket revenue. They're revenue passengers. You're non-rev, which means you don't pay anything. So unfortunately, you are last on the list. Now, let's talk about why you're last on the list. So all those, let's say all those revenue passengers get on, or maybe there wasn't any, and all you have are non-revs standing by. Now, what ends up happening next is all the people that are active employees, 
get on according to their seniority. So let's say there's a pass, there's a, a an employee, a, an active employee or their family member, because family members get benefits too. Let's say they have a seniority of uh, 1989. That's when they started working for the company, like April 10th, 1989. And let's say you just started working for the company in July 18th of 2019. So that person that has been working for the company way longer than you is going to get on before or way longer than the other active employee is going to get on before the lesser active employee. But you won't. You have to wait till they all get on. So let's say all the active employees get on. Next, they go to retired employees. So retired employees get a benefit. I'm not sure how it all works, but they get a benefit to continue using the benefits, but at a lower priority, which is after all the active passengers, all the active employees. That's what I'm trying to say. So then you have the, them and they all get on. Okay. Now you are next. You have the buddy pass. You are going to be next. It goes by the seniority of the employee. You got your buddy pass on. So let's go back to that 1989, April 10th, 1989 employee. They gave a buddy pass to someone who is also standing by for your flight. You got your buddy pass from your buddy who started July, whatever, 2019. So that person with 1989 is going above you, you are after. So you have all these people to wait for. And if this plane is full, which usually many airlines, especially in the summer, are very, very full, you have to wait till everybody gets on before you can get on the flight. Now, all that is to say is that I, highly, highly recommend you just buy a ticket because after all that, it's probably worth your time to just buy a ticket. Let me tell you a story. I know of someone who told me this story that she was in JFK. She went with, uh, she used a buddy pass and went with the parents of the employees. So the parents get benefits, but the parents and them, they all went to New York, had no problem getting on the plane as buddy passes. However, New York is one of the most difficult ones to get out of to come back to Atlanta. So they stood by all day long at JFK as the parents got on an earlier flight. They had to wait because they were the last, last, last people to get on flights. And they have all these people coming all day long trying to get on flights who have better seniority or better, uh, what's it called? Better seniority, better... I can't even remember. So anyway, so they waited. So finally they changed their route to go to New Orleans and then they had to sleep over and catch the morning flight to Atlanta. They finally, so they waited all day in JFK. They get to New Orleans. They have to pay for a hotel cause they're not sleeping in the airport. And then they have to then go to Atlanta. So the money that they spent and the time that they spent would have cost way less if they just had purchased a confirmed ticket. Besides the fact that most of the time that what you spend on a buddy pass, if you just the confirmed tickets, sometimes like 50, maybe $70 more, it is worth your time. I will tell you that right now. Do not ask for buddy passes. They are not worth your time. Also, another reason why employees don't like to give out buddy passes is because if you misbehave on somebody's buddy pass, they, the employee will get in trouble. They will get in trouble for your behavior. So the person giving out the buddy pass, if they don't really know you, they're not going to give it to you because that is their livelihood, their benefit, their job. Anything that you do reflects on them. That is my story about the buddy passes. Don't ask anybody for buddy passes unless you like, it's like your best friend from high school. You've knew, known them since you were three years old. Honestly, buy yourself a ticket. It is way, way cheaper way less stressful if you have a confirmed ticket.